Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to talk about the golden rule. What is the golden rule? Is it do unto others as you would have them do unto you? Yes, but maybe there are other meanings of the golden rule. My guest today is Helen Jacquard. Helen is a member of the Veterans for Peace, and she's also the project manager and a crew member of the Golden Rule. Maybe the Golden Rule is a physical manifestation. It's a sailboat. This Golden Rule sailboat is what Helen calls a peace boat. The Golden Rule peace boat is about to embark on a voyage across the sea for peace. Helen is talking to us from San Diego, California. Welcome aboard, Helen. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks, Mark. Great to see you as well. Okay, Helen. Now, uh, before we start talking about the Golden Rule Peace Boat, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, the Veterans for Peace, and how you got involved uh, in that. And then we'll, we'll go into the Golden Rule, uh, the many meanings of the Golden Rule. Great. Veterans for Peace is a large organization of military veterans over, with over 100 chapters in the United States and around 10 chapters internationally. And uh, they believe that all war is wrong, avoidable, and only hurts people that um, really have nothing to do with starting the wars. Um, so they wish to end war as an instrument of national policy. And so Veterans for Peace um, is mostly military veterans, but it's also other supporters. Um, so I'm a member of Veterans for Peace, even though I'm not a military veteran. Okay, and how, do, how did you get involved um, one in One part, I got involved with uh, Veterans for Peace when I met my partner. Uh, completely changed my world. He was working more independently as a peace activist and supporting people who had um, fled to Canada uh, uh, instead of redeploying to Iraq or Afghanistan. And when we met, it became obvious that we should both join Veterans for Peace and join a larger effort to end war and militarism. Um, so we did that and then I became involved with the Golden Rule several years after that when I heard about that this boat had it sank in Humboldt Bay and it was being restored by Veterans for Peace and we went and took a look at her and she was you know small and had a big hole in her side and I didn't think too much about her but in February 2015 there was a call that came out uh, to all Veterans for Peace members to come and help finish rebuilding the boat and get it ready to sail. I thought, wow, let's do that. So I turned to my partner, Jerry Condon, who's the national president of Veterans for Peace right now, and said, hey, let's, uh, let's go see what we can do. So we, we moved into the boatyard temporarily, and I ended up becoming crew on the first voyage that started out in July of 2015. Well, what, what, what attracted you to the Golden Rule sailboat in the first place? Uh, I mean, it, was there a meaning behind that? I mean, obviously the Golden Rule, uh, there is a meaning, but was there a meaning behind the sailboat also? There was initially. So in 1958, a group of Quakers purchased the Golden Rule right after she was uh, finished and decided they decided to name her the Golden Rule. And I believe it had to do with don't do unto others, as in poison the atmosphere with radiation from nuclear bomb tests, as you wouldn't want them to do unto you. Okay. So this okay. was this was a, a Quaker Christian principle that has carried the Golden Thrill Rule through to today where we're trying to say, don't develop nuclear weapons, don't poison the earth with nuclear power accidents, because we don't want 
you to do that to us. Now, did, did the Quakers do anything with the, the golden rule as far as uh, making it a symbol for this anti-nuclear uh, movement? Or what, what did they use it for? So after trying really hard to get nuclear bomb testing in the finished in the Pacific to get our, our country to cancel it, they decided that the normal tactics of protest, contacting Congress, letters to the editor, things like that weren't enough. So they bought this little boat and they tried to sail it to the Marshall Islands. They were just going to put their lives in the way of nuclear bomb testing. Because there was testing they going on in the Mar Marshall Islands, is that right? Yeah. Exactly right. Ultimately, we had we dropped sixty-seven nuclear bombs wow. on the islands in the Marshall Islands, and the Golden Rule was trying to sail there. It was kind of towards the end of that testing, um, and so they made it to Honolulu, and the Atomic Energy Commission had created a rule saying that you couldn't enter the nuclear bomb test area. And on that basis, the golden rule was stopped in Honolulu from proceeding to the Marshall Islands. Another boat happened to come up into a slip that in that same harbor, they decided that they would take the baton and they did sail into the Marshall Islands. Ultimately, they did see an atomic bomb test. And because of the arrest of the crew of the Golden Rule and the arrest of Dr. Earl Reynolds, captain of the Phoenix that finished the voyage. People were really upset and they all got together and started putting pressure on Congress. And ultimately, President Kennedy signed the limited test ban treaty with the UK and the USSR that stopped most nuclear bomb tests. So there was some positive results based upon some input by the Golden Rule Peace Boat. Exactly. These two boats had a huge impact on getting the nuclear bomb tests to start. And also, um, the Golden Rule was the inspiration for Greenpeace to start. So, I mean, you mean to, 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 to stop the, the, uh, the nuclear tests in, in the Pacific? Is, is what the, the so goal was right. that, that was accomplished. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, um, Greenpeace's first action was to go to Alaska to stop the underground testing that was still going on there. Let's take a look at the first slide we have. And it, is it, what, what is this? And I, I think I know, but tell me. It's the golden rule. It's the peace boat. It's the little boat with a huge mission to sail around the Pacific to try to stop the nuclear arms race, um, to get everyone to disarm and to do what we can to bring awareness to the cost of nuclear everything and the cost of war and militarism. And is, is this the way it looks today? Is this uh, basically accurate uh, photo of of uh, the golden rule? Yes, it is. We have new sales, and this is a picture of the new sales uh, in action. Yeah. And, and how many crew, crew members uh, can we get on the golden rule? Four. There's four bunks, and uh, the boat really takes four people to sail properly. So um, <laughs> that's what we carry on our longer trips. And the, the, the next slide put up there, are, are those some uh, crew members that have been on the Golden Rule? They are indeed. Uh, we have CB and Tom Rogers used to be a nuclear submariner. He was a, he's a Navy veteran. He's a, um, he was a command, uh, captain in the Navy for many, many years. And then, and he was a commander of a nuclear armed submarine. And now he protests against nuclear power or nuclear um, weapons. And then we have uh, Dan Lapala, who was the captain at the time, and Jamie Skinner, who is a Quaker and a member of veteran, veteran member of Veterans for Peace. So it was a good crew. And, and that was from a prior voyage, is that, is that right? Yes, that's correct. That was a voyage that took off May 1st. 
And now, now you, you're planning a new voyage, right? I mean, you're, you're planning a, 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 a sort of peace in the Pacific voyage uh, with the golden rule. What, what's all that about? Right, so the objective of uh, going around the Pacific is to try to bring attention to the cost of nuclear weapons and militarism, um, the effects of those on the people and the environment in the Pacific. So we're going to start out going to Hawaii and stay there for several months. Then finally, we're going to go to the Marshall Islands and stay there for a while. Then we'll go to on to Guam and Okinawa and Korea. And then we want to be in Japan for the 75th anniversary of the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So this, the, uh, uh, we, the, we, we, we have kind of a map up right now showing your proposed journey. When, when do you plan to start? And, and, and it looks like, I mean, this is quite a trip. Correct. Um, so we depart California July 1st, 2019, approximately, and then we'll be in Hawaii until November or December, and then we'll head on to the Marshall Islands. Um, kind of, you know, we have time enough to plan for sure when we'll be at these places, but Guam in February, Okinawa in March and April of 2020, and then Japan. For sure, we want to be there in August of 2020. And then we should be sailing some around Asia uh, so that we can wait until spring to make the big voyage back to the United States from Japan. And all of these locations that you're going to have some connection with, with nuclear arms and testing, right? Or they have connections to militarism. I see. So the U.S. military has a huge footprint all over the Pacific. It's um, even in Hawaii, there are dozens of military facilities in, in the Hawaiian Islands. And we want to bring attention to that because, you know, these countries don't have military bases in the United States. So why would they want United States military bases to be in their country? So it's a golden rule kind of thing. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, the, the golden rule, as you, as you said it, and the philosophy is, you know, don't do to other people what you wouldn't want done to yourself. Is that, your, is that basically you're carrying on what the Quakers first proposed as, as the golden rule? Is that right? Yeah. Right, exactly. So, you know, the United States has about 800 military bases in foreign lands, but how many foreign lands have... <laughs> military bases in the United States. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't think, uh, I, I can't name one. Uh, so I, I guess the answer is none, is that right? Yeah. Uh, so right. What, what, what type of activities would, do, you, do you plan for the various uh, places you're gonna go and sail to? So this is primarily an educational mission where at every port we talk to groups of people about nuclear matters and militarism and what's affecting them so that our audience uh, will be able to say, wow, I didn't know what was going on in the Marshall Islands today. I didn't know that people were still born with birth defects as a result of the nuclear bomb testing there. Um, I didn't know that you know, the United States has basically taken over Guam and many other islands in the Pacific and what effect that has on the local communities. So we'll give educational presentations and um, have the microphone be used by the people that are th there. And we'll publish everything on our website and through articles, um, just letting everybody know, well, this is the effect of militarism and nuclear activities in the Pacific. Okay, and you're going to be in Hawaii, and when we come back from a short break, I would like to talk about what you're going to be doing here in Hawaii when, when you uh, get over here. So we'll take a, a short break and be right back. All right. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. 
My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming Salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, and we are back with Law Across the Sea. Uh, today we have Helen Jacquard. She's talking to us from San Diego. She's the project manager for the Golden Rule, a peace boat whose goal is to educate and tell people what dangers there can be from militarism and nuclear arms. Helen, uh, you're going to be coming here to Hawaii. When, when does that happen? What are your plans for Hawaii? Uh, what will you be doing while you're here? Well, I'm excited to be coming to Hawaii. I won't be on the boat, but I'll meet the boat, so I'm flying over. And I'm really looking forward to talking with all kinds of various groups about our mission and what they're experiencing regarding militarism and the nuclear industry in Hawaii. So we'll start out by going to Hilo, which is the very first port you would come to when you're traveling from the mainland US. And we, and have, a, we have a map of that. That, that trip, yeah. So right. you start Hilo, okay. Right, yeah. And then um, after two weeks or so, we'll go around to the Kona side and spend two or three weeks there. Um, and then we want to spend around a month in Maui. And then we want to go to Lanai for a week and Molokai for a week before finally going and spending quite a while in Oahu. Um, in addition to educational presentations to, like I say, all kinds of groups, we reach out to groups of faith, we reach out to service organizations, um, indigenous peoples, um, peace groups, um, any, any small group that would like to have a presentation, we will give that. And then we also will take people out sailing. Um, it's a great way to get to know the Golden Rule and the crew and to learn about our mission. Mm -hmm. And um, and then one thing that we'd really like to do in, when we get to Honolulu is have a conference where uh, Pacific Islanders can get together and talk about how U.S. militarism and the nuclear industry and at the time, of course, the, the nuclear bomb testing has affected their communities. Uh, and that will be a great way to help prepare, for example, people of the Marshall Islands and Guam and Okinawa mm -hmm. and Japan, help them prepare to receive us when we get there. Now, you, you mentioned um, that you're looking to meet up with various groups, but is there, any, uh, is there any faith element to the Golden Rule, or is this a more a generalized humanitarian group? Uh, or give me, give me a little bit of background and insight into the Golden Rule uh, philosophy, if you will? Or is it a religious uh, background? No, not at all. The boat and the project are owned by Veterans for Peace, and they are not a religious organization. They are a, a education devoted to exposing the true costs of war, whether that's human, financial, or environmental. They want people to know why it is that we shouldn't be making war. So it uh, doesn't have anything to do with religion per se. Many of our members um, are people of faith, 
and we welcome all people of faith to be part of the project or people of no faith whatsoever. So that we're still very much involved with the Quakers. It was their project originally in 1958, and we try to make sure that wherever we go, we have uh, a nice uh, gathering with the the Quakers, the Friends meetings wherever wherever we are and wherever they are. So there's that connection, but there's also many many other groups that we'd like to get together with. And I guess you you know what what you said earlier about your about, you know, don't do unto others as you wouldn't want done unto, unto you is kind of the, the general philosophy. It's not a, not a religious philosophy at all, but more of a, a humanitarian or a, a, a humanistic philosophy that it, it crosses all borders, if you will. That's correct. It's part of most major religions in some form or another, but it's also a really good moral, ethical code that if we were to keep that in mind, we'd have a much better world. Just like whenever you're speaking to someone, whether you, no matter your own emotions or your relationship, if you always come from a point of view of love, it's hard to go wrong. So it's the same thing with the golden rule. If you always think about what it is, how it is somebody else would like to be treated or how you would like to be treated, then you're going to act in a much better way. And, and uh, nobody really wants to have uh, nuclear testing in their backyard or mili threats of military use. But now you're going to be traveling in this area uh, where there, they have this type of thing. I mean, is there uh, any uh, concern about reaction from governments in that area? Or, uh, I mean, the first golden rule you said was stopped by our own government from going into the nuclear testing uh, zone. Is there? Do you have any concerns about that? Not particularly, no. Even when we are out in the water at the same time as the military, basically giving a message of peace in contrast to their message of war, we coordinate so that nobody gets hurt and nobody gets arrested. This is something that it should appeal to a broad public and therefore we don't want people to turn against us thinking that we're doing something crazy or dangerous. So you're just, you're no, just trying to get across a message. You're trying to get a, just trying to get a message across. Hopefully the message is strong enough is what, is what I hear you saying. That's correct. We add our voices and the voices of the people that we're going to be interacting with to everybody else's voices that say, stop the nuclear weapons and stop militarism. Now, uh, I've no, I, I understand there may have been some uh, need for crew or need for repairs of engines. And what, what, what's the status of the sailboat? Are you going to be ready to go? Is the Golden Rule going to be prepared to sail uh, in July? I'm really happy to report that we have a new engine it's installed completely as well as a completely redesigned new exhaust system which was the problem with the engine that we had to have replaced so yes we're ready physically we don't have big projects to do we're ready to go we have four wonderful crew members and all we have to do is um Hope that that uh, we don't end up with any, uh, you know, bad weather. Well, I, I noticed that in the next slide will show that you had to turn back and, and first, on your first uh, attempt, uh, you had to, you went out and you had to come back uh, to San Diego, I guess. Uh, but what, what, what was the cause of that? Well, as I alluded to, the exhaust system that we previously had allowed water to come up through in and into the engine and salt water in an engine can destroy it. So, um, so we had to get a new engine because it was, it was pretty in pretty bad shape. So I mean, that was, it's been the, repaired. The whole, and it's been repaired. Yeah. You're ready to go. The whole experience set us back. Okay. And on the, um, uh, 
crew, you're, you're, you're set with the crew and the captain, and, and all, you got four, four crew, is that right? We do have four crew, including the captain, yeah. And, and you're all and, ready to go? Uh, they'll be arriving in, uh, yeah, they'll be arriving in San Diego next weekend. Okay, now I want to finish up with a couple of photos. There's a, there's a photo here. I'd like you to explain what this is and give us some idea. Is this the type of thing you'll be doing when you're traveling around? I hope that we can do quite a bit of this. Um, this is um, Puna uh, Kamala Kalama Dawson, and she came over. She's a, a, a Hawaiian elder who lives in Kauai and came over to welcome the Golden Rule and crew to Hawaii. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful ceremony, and I would really like it if, uh, if we were able to be received by the ports in wherever we go by, you know, the people that are native to that area. So uh, we'll be coordinating with Pune and with other uh, Hawaiian natives to see if we can um, establish a good protocol for our landings. And uh, is this uh, what you'll be doing for every port you go to, sending out word in advance and trying to connect with the local folks? That's totally correct. Uh, we want to be welcome wherever we go. And I think that it would be a good idea to have a ceremony about that wherever we go so that we know that we're welcome and people know that we're coming and we'll arrange events long in advance for our speaking engagements. So. Um, I look forward to making a lot of plans for that um, starting soon in Hilo. You'll start hearing about where we're going to be. Okay, now let's, we're going to take one last boat shot of your sailboat again, uh, the Golden Rule, and tell everybody how they can contact you or the Golden Rule if they want to uh, join up or help out. Thank you, and we will need a lot of help. Our website is V as in veterans, F as in four, P as in peace, VFP, goldenrule.org. And our email address is VFP golden rule project at gmail.com. I welcome your offers of help to be a speaker, an author, a musician, um, someone who can help coordinate events wherever we go. Um, we'll need occasional host families, so a place to stay. Um, people that can help with uh, landing ceremonies wherever we go. So there's a lot you can do to help. And then we'll be, um, at the end of every presentation, we talk about other actions that you can take to support the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons that the United States or the United Nations has, and the principles of back from the brink, which is a way to, in the meantime, help us to not accidentally start a nuclear war, like Helen, taking the Minuteman missiles off of hair trigger alert. Thank you, Helen. Uh, it was great to have you uh, on board and uh, looking forward to your arrival here in Hawaii. Uh, Helen Jacquard, the project manager of the Golden Rule, don't treat other people the way you don't want to be treated is, is the golden rule, and so is the sailboat. So, Helen, uh, aloha, and we'll, we'll see you when you arrive on Oahu. Aloha, Mark. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we will be back in two weeks with another Law Across the Sea program. Aloha.